Peace, peace, family. Welcome to another episode of the Grind Podcast, brought to you by the AI3 Leadership Academy. I'm your host, Anthony Ireland. But before we get started, I'd like to encourage all our listeners and supporters to please like, rate, subscribe, and even leave us a comment on our channel. Your feedback is greatly appreciated, so feel free to do that. But with that being said, here's our next guest with recent St. John's graduate and hometown hero, Mustafa Haran. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 17th episode of the Grind Podcast. Right now, I have my very good friend, Mustafa Haran, on the podcast. Um, we're currently in Waterbury, Connecticut, um, at one of the, uh, one of, a, an historic building for me. Um, the, the owners of this building, it, obviously it's a barbershop, but more importantly, um, it was the very first small business owner that I knew that was, that was black um, in, in our area. So, you know, I con- constantly wanted, wanted to pay homage to him um, in terms of just, just planting that seed. So right, right now we're currently at the Family First Barbershop in Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, but I appreciate you coming on, bro. I know we've been Thank trying to me. trying to get this going for maybe about a good five six months now. But I think I'm glad I'm glad you were able to get on, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Uh, what was it like? Um, so so you bounced not bounced around, but you grew up in Meriden mm-hmm. and, and mainly Waterbury. Yeah, pretty much. Um, lived in Meriden for a long, very long time until end of high school. I was always in Waterbury. Pretty much every day. My dad worked at a Connecticut Junior Republic. Mm-hmm. which everybody knows is CJR, so I mm-hmm. was there every day, you know, uh, after school. I'm always in Waterbury, put all my friends based in Waterbury for the most part, so. Okay, okay. what was what was it like growing up growing up in Waterbury, Waterbury for you? What, what were your outlets? Well, uh, I mean, it's, it's regular inner city. I mean, same, you know, things go on, I think, across America. Um, I think that for the most part, definitely being a young black male is, is sports is your first outlet, so I mm-hmm. think that, and that's definitely obviously what I've stuck with, you know, uh, as an outlet is, is basketball. Right, right, right. And, and you said your pops had the CJR gym, mm-hmm. so you were yeah. down there. That's cool, man. Um, so who would who would you say, if you can remember, who was the first person to kind of give you that initial inspiration or mm-hmm. place the basketball in your hands? Uh, definitely my dad. Uh, okay. I was like two years old. Okay, definitely. Okay. Uh, I remember that vividly. Basketball okay. was one of the things that if I'm crying, put a basketball in my hand, I'm going to stop crying. Put some basketball on the TV, I'll stop crying. I'm going to yeah. do all that stuff. So basketball, since I was young, has always been that. It's always been a love. Okay. Um, now your, your pops, your pops played played in college, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he played at Central Connecticut uh, okay. State University, and he played overseas for about seven, eight years, I want to say. Okay, okay. So, um, what did now? Did he graduate? Where did where did he? He graduated, graduated high school from where? High school is uh, Pagoda High School in New Jersey. I want to okay. say class of eighty four. Okay, I want to say okay. that time. Yeah. Definitely now. Um, so you know, that was that was mainly the facility that you were that you grew up at CJR. Mm-hmm. Yep, CJR for sure. Uh, okay. I'm up there every day. Right. Weekends, uh, holidays. Right, right, right. right. CJR was was definitely home. And it, and home. It, and it makes you feel like home because the gym's tight. Like yeah, get that good work in. Um, what was like? What, what was the? What was like during those early years in high school? What was the the basketball competition like growing up or not not even high school maybe like seventh eighth grade seventh eighth grade uh, around here it was uh it's crazy it's pretty much uh everybody that I went to uh, Sacred Heart with was like the biggest competition you got Tyron okay. Flowers Willie Petaway yeah. Charles Fisher okay. Isaiah Rascal like all those guys were like the biggest competition that we ended up getting together but I mean obviously everybody in Woodbury was in competition with each other it was yeah. all it was all healthy competition it was all it was it was all competitive. And so, like when I was growing up, like and similar now, but like back then, it was uh, it was just super guard heavy, mm-hmm. you know. So everybody in Waterbury was a guard. So it's like for me, I knew who the best guard at Wilby was or mm-hmm. Kennedy, you know. And like everybody was under like six two, six three. So you know, we were labeled as guards or, or shooting guards. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, at what age did it did it did it kind of hit you that like you know you might have an edge on? edge on those those people you were matched up against uh it hit me i mean honestly like i i didn't see the results from it but i knew that it would ha- start happening around like nine years old okay i, I knew that nobody I, I was never ever gonna let anybody work harder than me when it came to basketball mm-hmm. and nobody was gonna have more of like a passion in it for me nobody would love to, the process of getting better more than me like right. nobody would like going to the gym all that type of stuff lit uh dual push-ups like if, if you remember or if anybody remember my dad used to have me do push-ups when I used to miss layups and stuff like that when I was really okay. young or any time you know, messing up on defensive assignments just to 
you don't nobody want to sit there and do push ups in front right. of everybody. Yeah. So you're gonna learn how to correct your mistakes on the fly, do certain things like that. So I figured that nobody would uh, be working harder than me. So nine years old was okay. where I started to kind of think that, and then by like twelve, I started seeing that like nobody's around is gonna be right, right. Right. And it's and like you said, man, it's just just that work ethic. You know, I think yeah. that you know you you got it fairly quickly. Just that switch of like, mm-hmm. oh damn, if I put time in this, exactly. I'm gonna get results. Then I think that's where confidence comes from. Confidence is strictly based off of the work that you put in right. in the background when nobody's right. watching. So, yeah. Man. Um, now, were there any like? What were, while you were in high school, or not even high school, middle school, what, what were like the guys before you that you may have looked up to, or like, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of like came before you? Like, who was who was like those standouts in your mind? Uh, everybody in this area, from mm-hmm. you, uh, Ryan, Dale and Dame, uh, BJ, every, anybody that I came in contact with that was older than me, I looked at like I need to grab something from their game or just something from their life, something, a lesson, something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that can help shape me into who I have become and who I will become as right. a player and then as a man, obviously. Right. So all you guys have shaped me in some type of way. Yeah, no, that, that says a lot, man. And and I think, you know, and, and you know, last time when I had Gomes on the podcast, you know, I, I wanted to stress to him how, how just valuable he was to, to us just because, Super. like, you know, for him to even be able to think about going to the NBA, it's mm-hmm. like it's you know it's, it was beyond me because nobody did it before exactly. before him. You know, exactly. so then he laid that path, and then I come, and then you come. It's just like it's it's just awesome to see. Mm-hmm. Um, so what uh, which were the the top AU teams growing up before oh. you before you got to high school? Before high school, everybody was looking at Connecticut Elite. Okay, looking at CBC. And we're looking at New England players. Okay, in, yeah, yeah. Connecticut. And then, uh, like, I think that eventually, uh, New England players eventually turned to, like, East Coast Elite. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, like, that we are one, but that was uh, the CBC, CT Elite, and uh, New England players, like, the three teams, okay. I think, that everybody was looking at. Like, those are the elite team nationals, uh, different, you know, going to Vegas, all right. different tournaments, and stuff like that. Now, who, who did you, uh, who did you team up with? I played for a lot of different teams. Oh, you did? I played for all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I played for teams in New York. I played for everybody. I okay, for okay, we're people. just hoping. Uh, there you teams, yeah. Um, so, this is probably, like, your first viral moment mm. um, as an eighth grader. Uh, oh, yeah. With uh, Chris Paul. Um, I actually got to watch, I watched the video. Mm. Um that's when you had locks, yeah. Yep, right? yep, yep. Um, but uh, what 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 camp was that, and what was ultimately what was that moment looking like as you look back on it now? Okay, that was a, that was a five star basketball camp. Where, where 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 was it at? I want to say it was at uh, Long Island. You did, it was like LIU Brooklyn. Okay, it okay. was like a little uh, middle school clinic. It was I remember getting out of school at like like two thirty. And then driving right down from school, me and my dad drove right down and then uh, started at like five. I was almost late, I think. Okay. A lot of traffic. But then um, I didn't know that any of them was, nobody knew that it was going to be. Who was there? LeBron, Carmelo, D Wade, and Chris Paul. And what what year? What year is this? This is, I'm in eighth grade, so like 2012. This is right here. This is, yeah, 2012, yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, what was that? Like how did how did that? Can you just paint that scenario out first? Like how, why did you get selected to mm-hmm. guard him? Oh, uh, it it really was just like when they had walked in. We were doing drills and stuff. They had walked in and like everybody's backs kind of turned to them. And then they we finished the drills up. Like everybody turns around like oh it's LeBron and all of them. So they kind of you know they sit us down. They talking to us and all that stuff. So after they finished talking to us, we kind of disperse as a camp. Chris Paul is dribbling around, but he's kind of like dribbling around kids and stuff. And I like take the ball, I come from behind him, like take the ball from him. And then like, he kind of like looking at me, I give it back to him, kind of like tell me to guard up. And then you know how it goes. And then everybody kind of sees, everybody's walking over, becomes uh, like a a mob. And then eventually you see, he score on me. (laughs) (laughs) No, that was dope, man. So when was the last time you actually saw the video? It's been a minute? It's been a minute since I seen it. But when it first came out, I remember I was in, uh, I, I woke up the day the day after it happened. I woke up the next morning and it was on um, ESPN Top Ten, and that was the first time I made Top Ten. I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking like, yo, I'm on Top Ten right now. Hey. Like, <laughs> like that's me right there. Right, right. School, everybody in school was like, yo, I saw ESPN this morning. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that was me. That's great. <laughs> that's dope, man. Uh, so that was like eighth grade year, mm-hmm. summer. Okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, no, that was in the middle of school year. It was like okay. in the winter time because it was during the NBA season. They had um, stopped by the camp just to talk to us. So um, I think uh, 
I think the Heat might have been playing the Knicks. Okay. So they were playing against Mellon. Uh, yeah, they were playing, and then Chris Ball happened. I think he was just in town. Okay, okay. I don't know what he was doing, but uh, I think the Heat was playing yeah. against the Knicks. Okay. Now, um, okay, let's get into your into your high school years. What uh, what high school did you initially attend? Uh, when I first started high school, I was at Capital Prep. Oh, really? Okay. Harvard, yeah, okay. Capital, and Capital Prep is a uh, charter school, and they go to school 10 months a year. So we started in July, and I went through, and that was like my first, that was my first summer uh, really traveling and being on the AAU circuit and on the scene and all that stuff. So I was going to Vegas and all that stuff. And since it's a school that's uh, going to school 10 months out of the year, I miss a lot of school time. Okay. So I was making up through the fall and all that stuff. I'm making up school work, and I'm just like, I can't do this for four years where I need to go be able to be showcased in the summertime, do all different things like that. So in like late October, early November, I want to say, I uh, went to a prep school. I went to Wilbraham and Munson okay. Academy out in uh, Wilbraham, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, had a pretty good uh, team out there. And then I ended up coming back uh, my sophomore year because I felt like there was uh, something missing as mm. far as like from a developmental piece. It's almost mm. like uh, sometimes when you go to like the prep schools or you go even some uh, uh, campuses, you can attest to this. They tell you like we're gonna have development, we know work out, work out, work out. But then once you get there, yeah. there's a schedule. Yeah. And there's uh, oh we can only do certain things on certain days of the week, and there's restrictions and there's certain things. So it's like I I figured uh, if I go home. I could work at a CJO, I could do it as much as I want. Nobody can tell me I can't come to the gym at this time right, or a coach right, right. can't tell me I can't work out with you because there's a rule. Right. If I'm working out with my dad, he's not gonna tell me like right. there's no, there's a rule where we can't work out together. Okay. So that was uh, initially the reason I came home. So that okay. was like elemental. Okay, and then and now at Wilbraham Wilbraham and Munson, were you staying on campus or were you yeah. commuting? You're staying okay. on campus, yeah. Okay. Um so then so then you transferred to Sacred Heart. Yeah. And um how was that just how was that? How was that transition into just NBA, NBA basketball? Mm -hmm. so definitely, it was when I came. I mean, when I went to prep school, I was used to play. Like, I mean, you've been to prep school. You playing against guys that's twenty years old, nineteen yeah. years old. I was fourteen when I went to high school, so I had to grow up fast. I, right. I was already used to obviously playing against guys like yourself and all the older guys. And when I was in middle school, but then it's when it's all the time. Yeah, yeah You yeah. got to grow up real fast. So yeah. I feel like it definitely matured me. A lot faster than the average ninth grader, and then when I think it showed when I came back like, okay. down to the NBL, I was I was already on like a like with dudes that were getting ready to go be all Americans and stuff. So I'm lifting with them every day. I'm doing, okay. training with them every day. So it just it's a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay. So um, so you would say like just there's, there's more structure at Wolverine okay. once, and then just the public school academy. Yeah, okay. I agree. Um, now now, would you say um? Now, what were when you were coming in into Sacred Heart? What were the uh, what were the standouts that well, that was your sophomore year? Sophomore year. So, yeah. what what guys were like, kind of like on the map already? Tyshawn Rogers was. Tyshawn Rogers. Yeah, okay. He was, he was a he was a big dog. Now, was he um was he a year ahead of you or he same was, year? He was, uh, want to say, a year or two ahead of me. I know he was definitely older than me, but he yeah. was, I want to say two years. Okay. He was actually, two years older. Than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyshawn, he was just a dog, man. Like, you know just could go get a bucket. He knew how to score. He, yeah. he, he just knew how to score. Yeah. <laughs> that's, and, that's all I can say. Y'all had, had a lot of battles. A lot of battles, yeah. Good um, battles, too. So what was, because uh, I think there, there's something to say about just like the Waterbury environment of basketball. Um, it's not, I don't think it's not like any, any, other, mm -hmm. any other place, at least where every, every other place I've been out to LA or like Seattle, like the high school hoops here when it's, when it's popping, popping, is. It's nothing like it. So, yeah. what was uh, what would you say is, is the most unique thing about just like Waterbury High School basketball? I would definitely say when I um, one thing about all three years uh, being in the NBL, it was never not competitive. Right. It was never not. We never didn't get somebody's best shot. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Everybody looked at us like we have to beat them, and, yeah. and it showed how and how everybody played against us, and it was fun. Right. Like, playing against playing in the NBL, playing against everybody, especially. We all grew up together and all this right, stuff. Yeah, and we yeah, ended up yeah. dispersing, going to different schools, yeah. and then obviously coming back to just compete against each other. It makes uh -huh. it a lot of fun. Yeah. And nobody's backing down from anybody. It doesn't right. matter if if it's you, me, Tyron, you, anybody. Right. Everybody's gonna go at you. It don't matter. Right. So. Yeah, I think I think that was the dope thing mm -hmm. as well. Just because you know, even when I was growing up, it was like every every everybody knew where their competition was. So you would have practice right after school from two thirty to four thirty, but then everybody. 
would get out of practice and then go hoop at the Y. Mm -hmm. So everybody from Kennedy will be sick. Everybody's exactly. going to hoop at the Y. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, just, I think it's, it's super special, just the basketball community here. Mm -hmm. um, so when did, what, what year was it that you committed committed to Pitt? Because that was the first school you Pitt committed was, to. Yeah, Pitt was uh, at to, uh, the middle of the basketball season my sophomore year. Okay. I committed to Pitt. Um, okay. And then the Jamie Dixon ends up leaving to go to TCU, I want to say, right after that season, I want to say. so. And then uh, that was also at the same time uh, Pitt was going from the Big East to the ACC. They were making that switch. Okay. So um, I ended up uh, decommitting when he was uh, getting ready to get up, uh, get out of there, and I opened up my options back up. Okay. And then I ended up committing to Auburn right before my senior year. Okay. Now, what went into just your decision to commit to Pitt? Was it just like, I want to get it over with, or... Like this a, is the school for me, or what, what was it? I took a um, I took an unofficial visit, went to go watch a game, but I also had there was a, a coach, uh, Barry Rawson, that was on. Uh, everybody knows him as Slice. He was um, he was one of the assistants there. Him and my dad played overseas together, so okay, family dope. friend relationship. Dope. Yeah. But I felt like that was that would have been a good situation for me mm -hmm. uh, as far as you know uh, from a college uh, standpoint. Definitely. So. Okay. Um, so sophomore year, state title. Mm -hmm. Um, what would would you say that was kind of like? Cause that was your first, you know, coming back from prep school, yeah. you know. So was that like your statement year, like kind of like saying like I'm here, like this is this is my my MVL, or, uh, or what was your, what was your mentality going into your sophomore year? Definitely, um, definitely was always wanted to win a state championship, it, but it did, it didn't feel like sophomore year it didn't feel um I don't know if it was a, it didn't feel real, but it, it was like mm. it didn't really feel like we put a stamp on it. Like we mm -hmm. felt like we won, we did you know, we got the job done, but it wasn't like we we won. Like right. we put a stamp on it. And then I think junior year was when I started kinda of coming into myself, okay. like coming into my own and become you know, uh knowing what type of player I was gonna become right, right, and right. things like that. And then I think that was when I started to put my stamp on like the right. state and all that stuff was starting my junior year. Okay. Um now now if you can remember I know I know we talked about your commitment to Pitt, but what was like who was like the first schools to start recruiting you? Or better yet, who was what was the first college letter you received? Or yeah, and at, what, at what age? Kansas State at 14. It was right after the National Prep Showcase. Okay. I had a pretty good game uh, against, uh, let's say it was like Putnam Science Academy. Uh -huh. Kansas State called. And then uh, They called? Yeah. Okay, Kansas okay. Calls. And uh, Cincinnati calls next. Okay. Uh, and then I want to say Syracuse was third that weekend. Uh -huh. And then I signed in uh, going into the, my freshman year. Then they just kind of started, they started piling in. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now I was like, I know you knew you were a Duke Division One player, but like mm -hmm. now it's come and now it's becoming a reality. So like, you know what I mean? Like, did you were you like super excited at any point, or was it just like, nah, this is this is my path? Like this. Is Definitely excited, because um, it's like you watching these colleges on TV and these coaches calling your phone. I don't even know how you got my number. Right, so he's right. calling me, and I'm like, all right, this is. What was this again? This was, they on? Oh, all right. Well, how you doing, coach? Like, what's going? Like, but it's like it's 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 almost surreal at first, but then you kind of get used to it, and you you want more of it. So it's like, all right, I gotta get back to the gym. Yeah, I I can't forget what got me here. Uh -huh. So that was the biggest thing that I always kept in the back of my mind. If I want every coach in the country calling me, I'm not gonna forget what got them calling. Word, me. word. Yeah, that's that's wise. Um, now, what a what AU team did you play with that that off season after your sophomore year? Sophomore, I was with uh, New Heights. New Heights, I remember. Yeah, I remember. They were out of Harlem. What uh, what what other players were on the were on the team or like notable guys? We had um, kid that went to Minnesota. He plays on the season now. Dupree McBrayer, okay, a lefty point guard. Uh, we had a kid uh, named Mike uh, Enzi that went to Scene Hall. A um, couple, a couple uh, mid to high major guys. We had a, we had a talented team. Okay. Good team. Okay. Um, so, so then fast forward to your junior year, um, after having you know that that off season of being on the AAU circuit, mm -hmm. what was uh, what what was your mindset going into your junior year, trying to make it like you said feel feel more real and put your stamp on it? What was your, what was your uh, mindset? Honestly, I, the only thing that was going through my mind was like, yo, I was just in, I was in Philly at Reebok camp. I was just in the top 100 camp. I was just doing a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's no way I'm coming back to lose the state championship. Right, right. I like, I'm, everybody's saying I'm this, this, that, and that in the country, throughout the country, I'm proving that. 
I'm not coming back to Blue State Championship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was the only explanation for it. I'm not, right. If, whatever, if we got to beat somebody by 50, we got to do whatever, I'm not coming back to Blue State Championship. Because then it's like, well, you do all this stuff on these, on this right, AAU yeah. and all this, but you can't do it in your own state. Right, yeah. So I wasn't going to let nobody say that about me. <laughs> right, right. Um, who, was, who would you say, like that year, would you, would you say Tyshawn was still like the toughest matchup? Oh, uh, the junior year? <laughs> He wasn't uh, my junior. He was uh, he was gone. He was okay. graduated. Okay. Um, that was uh, we actually played Crosby in the um, NBL championship that year. That's uh, Jordan Booker. Okay. Okay. Um, Dan Jones. That's gotcha. that team. Yeah. Uh, the NBL was very competitive that year. Yeah. We yeah, I want to say we split with Crosby that year. Okay. Um, okay. Or two to one, my bad. Okay. So what was your what was your record, Junior? Uh, lost five games. Okay. In my in, at Sacred Heart, lost five games in three. Oh, games. at Sacred Heart, you only lost, lost five. five games in three years. Damn. Okay, so your junior year, you only lost. That was uh, we lost junior year. Did we? We lost. Did we lose game junior year? I don't think we lost a game my junior year. Mm -hmm. We lost two my senior year, and then we lost two to Crosby. Or did we, did we lose to Crosby once my junior year? We lost somewhere in there. We lost five games. Okay. But two definitely only lost two my senior year, and then probably lost three my junior year. Okay. We lost three games. Okay. So. Now, what were the uh, what were the matchups like? What were your like competition outside the city, like in the in the state? Who was like those guys? You're like, okay, this dude is up here killing. Mm -hmm. He's in New Haven doing work. Like, what were other guys? Oh, uh, you got guys. Uh, Isaac Van was at Benel. Uh, he ended up going to VCU. Mm, yep, yep, uh, yep. Tremont Waters. He was still in prep school at that time, but he ended up transferring to Notre Dame, um, West Haven. Um, CJ Seaforth, I think he was a handman at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just a lot, a lot of different guys. I feel like Connecticut has really actually slept on us. Yeah, it is. I, I think because we're such a small state from an athletic standpoint, I feel like it's a lot of talent. Out there. No, there is. We definitely slept on us. Like I said, it's always been competitive no matter yeah. how you look at it. So, no, I agree. Even like, even now, like you know, like I come across football guys that are like, mm -hmm. "Oh, you from Connecticut? You from yeah. Harvard? Like, are you from right there? Are you going to the Big Ten? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's. It's a, there's definitely a lot of gems out here, man. Yeah, there is. Um, so again, when did you you decommitted from Pitt? Mm -hmm. so you said sophomore year. Oh, uh, that's like end of sophomore year, okay. like right before, um, right before live period kicked off in July. I okay. think I was decommitted. I probably around May, some sometime around May June, I decommitted. Okay, so so then once you opened the recruitment back up, what was kind of was it, or how how were you able to handle it once you mm -hmm. opened it back up and you were like this five star athlete yeah. now? I never, I was always the type of person, like, I was confident in, like, because I put work, the work in that needed to be put in to be, like, considered good, but I was never somebody who was uh, arrogant or cocky uh, or, you know, kind of moved like that type of person, so it was uh, definitely, definitely, was it was good, but it wasn't something I'd get, let myself, my emotions get too high or too low on, okay. like, okay, then maybe this week I didn't get any calls from coaches, so right. I can't let myself lose sight of what's going on, uh, yeah. this week I got 10 calls, I'm not gonna say, all right, I'm gonna take a couple of days off, because I got 10 calls, it's, right, right. Right. it's, it's even killed throughout yeah. the whole okay. time. Word, man, word. Um, now, you win a state title, mm -hmm. junior year, and then, who do you, uh, who do you then play AAU with that summer? That summer, that that was my last AU, last so uh, New York Rens. New York Rens, okay. and that was like who who was on, who was on that team? That's, that oh, that team was stacked. Right? Chubbs was on that team. Tyron okay, Flowers, so uh, and my high school teammate with me on that team. But I had Raleigh Alkins was on that team with me. Tyreek Jones that went to uh, Raleigh went to Arizona. Yeah, plays uh professionally played, now. No, they didn't play against Raleigh, but he was mm -hmm. in the same league. I was oh, playing. okay. Yeah, and um, uh, Tyreek Jones played at Xavier. Uh, there we had another guy, Ryan Preston, he played at Rhode Island. Uh, Jose Alvarado, point guard at um, Georgia Tech right now. Mm, yeah. Devontae Green went to Indiana. We had, we had some heavy hitters on Damn. that team. Okay. Yeah, we, we won the Adidas circuit that summer. Okay. So we was like the number one Adidas team in the country. So. Oh, damn. Yeah. Now what, uh, so you guys are on the Adidas circuit. What Now what camps did you go to that summer? That summer, I went to Adidas Nations and I went to all, it's like the way Adidas, um, right. so the way it worked was like with your circuits, you got the Nike, you got Under Armour, you got Adidas circuit. Uh, all the circuits, uh, they host a series of uh, like all American camps, um, different uh, uh, games, 
different things like that. So I pretty much did the whole Adidas run mm -hmm. that year. So we, we did something where we played like a game at Rucker Park. We did Adidas Nations in LA, mm -hmm. uh, which is like where all the best Adidas players come uh, from throughout the globe. They had kids from Asia, kids from Africa, mm -hmm. um, all throughout the world. What year did you do that? That was 2015. We played on That's ESPN. Because I, 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 I did Adidas Nations 2014. You was a, and was I was the college counselor, yep, yep, okay. yeah. And yeah. it's like you said, it was, that's why I remember because mm -hmm. have like fifty kids from Asia, fifty from Europe, yep. fifty from Africa. You got the NBA scouts out there, so yeah. it's, it's really just a good week of basketball. Yeah. So yeah. I did, uh, I did all of those. We had the regional, the Adidas Nations camps, like uh, so my region, like the New York region. Okay. Um, definitely all the tournaments, all those different types of things. So it was a summer pack of basketball. Yeah, yeah, man. Gotta I used love, to love it. that stuff. I yeah, I know, me too, man. Traveling, yeah, hotels, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And and the the dope thing about it is like you're you're having so much fun with that experience mm -hmm. and you have no money. None. Like it's just like okay, None. coach, like okay, we got Mickey D's for the night or we got Whatever, but it's Pizza, like you're just with the homies and like with no money and you lucky if you got sent out of town with forty dollars. Right, you got sent out of town with forty dollars. You're lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like you're going to Vegas, you going L.A., you mm -hmm. everywhere, Florida, and it's like you just out there with no money, but you got. I don't even think our parents realize like. What could happen in the airport if we got stuck or something? If we, right, <laughs> right. We, we, we only out there with twenty dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> and right I just talk. got stuck in the airport a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I've been stuck in a couple cities by myself before. So <laughs> definitely, an AU experience are Word. second to none. Nah, yeah, for sure. The packed vans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody stinks. <laughs> right, you're right, right. Everybody's sweaty. Um, so then, okay, that was your last AU run. Mm -hmm. um, I know now your focus coming back to. NBL basketball is like, like what what is, what is your mentality like coming back after you know run after, the table right okay run the and table. this is this will be a three peak three peak okay run the table okay. Uh, it's funny my junior year um when it was the back to back we right before the state championship we thought like we might we should get shirts made and stuff like yeah. back to back and all that stuff and so we got back to back shirts made and all that stuff uh and then getting ready for uh, senior year we made the shirts like I'm not gonna lie we made it like a month before. A oh, word. The state okay. Oh, what the back to back one? No, the three P. The three P. You made it like a month before Ooh. the state championship, like before the state tournament started. Right, right. We were like, we about to run the table. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, we wasn't trying to be like arrogant or nothing, but we was like, nah, we're yeah. not losing to nobody. Right, right. It's not happening. Now, um, now what was, what was your recruitment like that year? Oh, uh, like, still, it was, it was pretty much now, on the on the because rise. Because you were, you had that whole year AU, so I know mm -hmm. it's going crazy. Um. And then, like, what what are you like? Are you like down to like a few schools, or are you just kind of open up to, or like, what was it? Going uh, so I so this is going into your senior year. Going into my senior year, I had um, committed in August. Going into my senior year, okay. so I was already my whole senior year. I was committed to Auburn. Okay. But that summer, it was a it was almost like I got a bunch of offers, and then I just committed to Auburn. And I would, like I went on an unofficial and just to kind of go see the campus, and I'm like. I told my parents like it's why I'm going to school work. Like on Saturday, so we got there on like a Friday, and then I'm like on Saturday, I'm like, yeah, I want to come to school here. Yeah, yeah. And by Sunday, we was we was out of there, but I had I was already committed. Word. And then I came back, committed to Auburn, and then I, all my official visits I took straight, straight to Auburn. Okay. So, oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Now I know everybody kind of has their, you know, their own like pregame routine, pregame superstitions. But in high school, what was like? you know, a typical game day like for you? To start off, in school, my diet was horrible in high school. I'm so glad I've changed that since, but I used to have to eat like, to you know those big, the, the, the big Texas uh, cinna, cinna rolls? Oh, yeah, so yeah. I used to have to eat like two of those, and I would eat uh, uh, like, a, uh, like a sausage, egg and cheese, like type panini, like for, for lunch. And then um, right after uh, school, we would go to the Boys and Girls Club, We'd work out with Mike Sanders, Ms. Work, shout out to Ms. Work. Yep, yep. We'd go um, work out with Mike for about an hour, maybe two, uh, just get some shots up, just, you know, getting a feel for the ball, think about different things that we was going to uh, work on in the game, you know, different stuff like that, which also, I'm glad we used to do that because it helped me to prepare for college, get yeah. ready to have shoot arounds, get yeah. ready to be able to mentally prepare yourself for a game mm -hmm. 10 hours before the game even mm -hmm. comes up, having your mind on basketball, and then knowing between that time, to take off, take your mind off of basketball for a little bit, yeah, and yeah. then get right back on it. Yeah. So we would work out um, right after school, and then we would uh, go get something to eat. I go right to Dunkin' Donuts, right, right across the street from Sacred Heart. Okay. Uh, egg and cheese on a croissant, like yeah. the two of them. 
Yeah. In, a, in a donut, maybe. Okay. I might get a culotta or something. Horrible diet. <laughs> and again, horrible diet. But then we're going, either whether it's home or away, we're either going to get on the bus or I'm going to um right inside the Sacred Heart to go watch like the JV uh, play, yeah, yeah, do, yeah. Uh, eat, do different things like that, and then go stretch. Word. Okay, yeah. I, and I think I think you might have been the first person I saw do that, bro. Like, when I, I remember coming back home for something, maybe been Christmas break or something, mm-hmm. and Mike had you, it was game day, and Mike had you in the in the gym. Yeah, yeah he was, was at a couple of, yeah. a lot of our pre- pre-game shoot-arounds. Yeah, and it was essentially, yeah. and I'm like, damn, like, this is pre- prepping him for mm-hmm. real shoot-arounds in college, and, you know, as a pro, so, and you were the, I, I, I wasn't doing that, you know, like, my routine was something totally different, but, you know, I think that, that says a lot about you, um, just, you know, being that, being that locked in um, as, as a junior, as a senior. Um, so what was it, uh, so then, so then, so then you're already, you're already, you're already committed to Auburn. Mm-hmm. So now you're just focusing on the three P. Yeah, pretty much. Just uh, I'm trying to get finish high school with as many points as I can. I'm right. trying to finish as the all-time leader scorer in Waterbury. I didn't do it. I was, okay. I was behind Tashawn by like by like. Uh, Tashawn's the all-time in Waterbury. He has like twenty-two or twenty-three hundred. I'm right behind him at like twenty-one. Damn. He had four at three and a half. Okay. Okay. Tyshawn, if I have four, I would have smoked you. Right <laughs> <laughs> if I have four, I would have smoked this record. Right oh, yeah, uh, if you have four years. Yeah, 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 yeah for four sure. years, I would have smoked it. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, Damn. Damn. That's, cr- that's a lot of buckets, bro. Buckets. Tyshawn got them. He got buckets, though. He was, yeah. <laughs> he was getting, he probably, he probably averaged close to 33 years straight. Right, right, right. That's crazy. Um, okay, then... You kind of now now that you get that championship, that three peat. Do you like, you know, does that like solidify you? You know, what I'm saying in like the rankings of past greats. You know, would you say? Yeah, this at this point, like with three, I'm like uh, fresh off the three. Like when we had won it right at Mohegan, and my mind, I'm thinking like there's nobody, yeah. and nobody, in nobody, there's no this. anybody in history. No, come on now, <laughs> right? Like, it's like if anybody says I'm not the best, then I'm not like right. I, I can't talk. I can't yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But um, but then after coming, you know, back to reality, it was just like, I was, first of all, like less like that. The real one, we right. really think about is like, man, yeah. we only lost five games in three years. Yeah, seventy-five and five is like that's unheard yeah, that's of. crazy. That's that's crazy. crazy. And you had a team too, yeah. like every year. That you know, what I'm saying that says a lot about just like you know, Sega Heart and you know the program that you guys essentially mm-hmm. started. You know what I mean? Um, you know, just to get guys around you. You know, that's that that says a lot. Um, now, now, ultimately, did you feel like you accomplished everything you could at, at Sega Heart? Yeah, yep, definitely. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to lose any state championships, so that was definitely the uh, one thing. I wish we could have won uh, those out-of-conference uh, games that we had. Definitely my senior year, because I think that that would have put us in, like, uh, the Dick's uh, National, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods National okay. Championship. That would have, we'd have been able to play in that if we would have won those out, uh, against Foothills Christian from uh, California. Who'd they have? They had the big... TJ Leaf, he plays yeah. on the, the, the Pacers now. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Team. And then uh, my AU teammate, Devontae Green, he played on uh, Long Island Lutheran, who we had played two days later in New York and okay. lost to. Okay, so. okay. Um, okay, so now you're, you're completely done with high school. Mm-hmm. So, like, and then was there any, like, no, no camps, but, like, what, what games did you get invited to? Oh, after? yeah. In the middle of the high school season is when you find out McDonald's, Jordan right. brand, and all right. that. So, throughout... And you were on the Adidas circuit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have killer AAU season, all right. that stuff. I'm literally think I'm top 25. I think I'm maybe 23 or 24 in the country. So I'm in my mind, I'm crying myself. I'm about to go play McDonald's. Like, yeah. Connecticut, like I'm thinking, like how many people from McDonald's been Connecticut? Or how many people yeah. from Connecticut been in McDonald's game in the Jordan game? I'm thinking like all of this stuff. Like you know, I'm headed for that. Right. Middle of the high school season comes, I don't get selected for either, and I'm like, dang. Right, right. Like, but what did I do wrong? And then uh, I ended up getting picked to play in the uh, Ball is Life game, right. the Kentucky Derby Classic. And I was Adidas, right? Uh, no, I, can t- I think no. they had went. They, I think they used to be Adidas, but right. they had went Under Armour oh, my right. senior year. So we we had got like Under Armour sneakers and stuff. But the Ball is Life was no uh, no sponsorship. So they had guys that was in the McDonald's okay. everything. They, they had everybody in there. Oh, so when I went to the Ball is Life. I had that's one goal that's, in mind. That's out, that's out in L.A. In L.A., in Orange okay. County, I had one goal in mind. I'm coming back with MVP. 
I was the only kid, I was the only kid from Connecticut. It was me and Raleigh, I think, might have been the only two kids from up in this region in the East Coast. Okay. Nobody's coming. I'm coming back with MVP. I, you didn't just pick me from McDonald's, and I'm about to kill everybody here. That's yeah, it. Yeah. simple as that. And I ended up coming back with MVP. Okay. Um, and then I did the same thing in Kentucky Derby. You got both MVPs. Both MVPs. I wasn't leaving with nothing. Damn. <laughs> and who was, who was on your team with the Ball is Life All-American uh, game? Or just give me the starting Started four, started five. Yeah, uh, guys like Cassius Winston. I think okay. he was my point guard. Uh, right. Another kid, JJ Caldwell, went to Texas, te uh, Texas A and M. Miles Bridges, okay, Terrence yeah. Ferguson, guys like that uh, were all in you know, in that game. So okay. Um, now, where where was the uh, Kentucky Derby? That was in Louisville. <clears throat> Louisville, yeah. Louisville, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that that was they were Adidas before. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, okay, now let's get into Auburn. Um, what was how was that? How was that? Um, how was that transition initially? Uh, Just coming from you know Waterbury, and then yeah, it's crazy. I once I went down to Auburn, and uh, Auburn was a it was like doing a complete one eighty from being in Waterbury. It was in the country. Yeah. It was a college town. It was every everything was within Auburn territory. Everything okay. was everything was all Auburn. Okay. Uh, but it was something that attracted, it was like a very attractive to me about that. And uh -huh. it was because it was secluded. It was like, <clears throat> I felt like it was, I'm somebody who doesn't, I don't like to be around a whole bunch of people. So yeah. it was somewhere I felt like that I could just kind of go on a straight and narrow and I could be by myself. Like not by myself, but in, the, in a sense where when I wanted to have that alone time, I wouldn't be right under a microscope. Mm -hmm. So Auburn was the perfect place. And then at the time they were kind of, they weren't doing very well from right. a basketball standpoint. Only known as a football school, started right. coming in thinking, this is a no name school. I can come here and literally create a name for myself, yeah. like a real household name, and that was my thinking going in the whole time. Now that was that was Bruce Pearl. Mm -hmm. Bruce Pearl was your coach. Yep, that, that's who you committed to. Yep, he was okay. in his uh, he was in his second year. I want to say he had uh, just okay. got the job maybe a year or two right before I committed. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they were still re super rebuilding. That was he. It was, so he was. You were like the main. Yeah, I was, I was main the, recruit, right? Yeah, I was his main. Yeah, I was the first um first five star, and then um like I was his main like recruit. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. So and then you know obviously just want to tell for the, for the people how it works. So like mm -hmm. you kind of <clears throat> you kind of come in as that first five star, and then it kind of brings in it's a trickle effect. Right. It's right. Super true. Once one person does it, it's almost like being a martyr for something. Once one person does yeah. it, everybody thinks that they should do it. Like, yeah. So Quick. now with the HBCUs, one that's what I was about to say. That's what I was about to say. So now, right, and for me, I don't, I don't know, um, but like, would if you had to do your uh, recruitment situation over, and you had the possibility of going to an HBCU, would you, would you consider it, or like, no, you know, you still wouldn't, still wouldn't. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so at at Auburn, what was the, uh, how was that? Just the transition academically. Oh, well, it was and Auburn is like a heavy, heavy engineering school. Okay. So it was like it wasn't that everybody thinks they get the idea college athlete. You know, you don't gotta go to class. You don't gotta. Right. You could do all these different things. No. Right. <laughs> At Auburn, you you go into class. You go into your tutors. You're doing all. You know, you're you're a student athlete. Like you're actually a real student athlete. Yeah. And I think that. That was definitely something that that taught me discipline, uh, like just another layer of discipline, another layer of knowing how to take care of your responsibilities, and mm -hmm. just um, being a man, pretty mm -hmm. much, just mm -hmm. knowing that there's something, there's a task at hand, and I have to complete this before I get to the next one. Right. So Auburn definitely was one of those schools that I struggled for my first about half a year. Right. I struggled like definitely with the transition the academically was crazy coming yeah. from high school. Yeah, no, I mean even same for me, man. Um, you know, I, I went to prep school. First, which prepped me for college, but I was still those first six, seven months. It's just so overwhelming, yeah. you know. Just mm -hmm. like there's so much responsibility, there's, and then you got to be, then you got to have practice on top of that, lift mm -hmm. weights, go to study hall. Then you have six, seven classes. It's like mm -hmm. what you know in terms of time management. It's like I'm 18 years old. Like what do you expect me? <laughs> and in our both of our cases, we are over. 800 miles from, from the crib. Mommy yeah. and daddy can't help us. No. We, no matter, we could call them, we could do all that, but no matter what, at that very moment, yeah. the only person that can get us out of anything that we're going through yeah. is us. Oh, yeah. So it definitely, it teaches you that you gotta be a man. You gotta, right. you gotta grow up, you gotta grow up fast, yeah. and you gotta, there's certain things that you have to take care of. So. Oh, yeah, that's a good point, man. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so what did, what did you major in initially? Communication. Communication. Uh, uh, sports broadcasting was okay. like my, was definitely something that I looked at like, there's a lot of guys that when, once they finish, I always felt like I had like a personality for TV and things like that. Okay. So I always looked at guys like uh, Barkley, which is funny that he went to Auburn. So right. I definitely had conversations with him. Great guy. Funny. Right. He's funny. Uh, Shannon Sharp, guys like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Now was it, um, for you, was it, was it, was it hard juggling both basketball and academics? Like kind of, like once you got into the routine, mm-hmm. was it was it fairly easy? Or well, was yeah. It? Now once you once you get into the routine and you kind of know like what to expect, uh, which teachers are which ways, you know, yeah. how to, you know which tutors, you know, are a little bit more helping with the work, and some make you kind of do a little bit more on your own. Like mm-hmm. every you know every athlete kind of knows how that goes, but um. Definitely, once you kind of get the hang of things, like being in high school all right. over again, you kind of find your way right. around, and then um, definitely, you know, the grades start picking up and all that, and I uh, uh, gra- ended up graduating college, uh, I mean, all-conference academic team, I mean, Big East oh, really? academic team. Like oh, so you graduated a little early? Uh, no, nah, not a little, no, nah, nah, I didn't graduate early, I graduated right on uh, a okay. time. Okay, um, now, how was, how was the, how was the adjustment, like, basketball-wise, like, you know, because you come from, you know, sick of hard where it's like you're in control when, mm-hmm. you know, or your pops or Mike is in control when you're working out or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but now it's like, you know, you have you have a lot of responsibility. You have, mm-hmm. you know, a different type of weight system that you're yeah. on. You know, you're eating different. Mm-hmm. Um, so how was, how was that, how was that a, you know, the, the adjustment into basketball? My first summer going into Auburn, I worked like crazy, like, we, we uh, well, not just me, but everybody on the team, but like uh, definitely keeping up with my own regimen, uh, with the weights and all that stuff. I worked like crazy, but when we were playing as a team and practicing all that stuff, I had a horrible basketball summer. Mm. I didn't shoot the ball. Well, we used to keep stats of everything. Mm. Damn. I didn't shoot the ball well. I didn't. I wasn't doing. A, I wasn't doing anything. I, I honestly probably looked like a two star instead of a five star coming yeah. in that first summer, and then we had like. Right before our exhi- our first exhibition game, we had like a week, like a, maybe like a week of practices, and I had like two or three good practices out that week, and then somebody I think had uh got got uh got hurt right before the exhibition game, and the only thing Bruce had, could do was start me. I wasn't supposed to start. Oh, you wasn't you wasn't playing. It wasn't. I probably wasn't gonna start. That's how bad. That's how bad. I personally is how, how oh, bad okay. I thought my summer was that okay. I wouldn't start myself. Okay. That's okay. A, for somebody to say they wouldn't start right, myself, right, it's okay. crazy like. But um, I, I, somebody ended up getting hurt. I had to start. I ended up having 26 in our exhibition game. I don't know what happened. Damn. I ended up having like 26. And then Bruce looks at me. He's like, where, 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 where you been, like bro? Game time type of guy. <laughs> right, like, right. I don't know. I guess so. But then after that, that kind of just started the the way of, you know, the freshman year at, uh, at Auburn. I think I had one game. Uh, I got the freshman record for scoring. I had one game where I didn't have like a double digit double scoring. Wow. So but Damn. And that um, was like conference play. Okay. Oh, okay. So that was after. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now, what were what were your kind of own expectations going in? You know, going in as a freshman. Like, what did you kind of like? What resume? What foundation did you want to establish for for yourself? Uh, definitely, I um, I told myself coming as a in as a freshman, I wasn't going to average any less than eleven, twelve points. That was kind of what you know the bar I had set my for myself, kind of. Not really knowing much about college and you know how I was gonna you know what, how I was gonna work my way into the system and all that stuff, but I thought like, hey, I'm not gonna get less than twelve because I figured if I was averaging thirty in high school, right, getting half of that would be pretty good at a college yeah, level. So, yeah, for sure. so I figured I would average twelve, and then it's funny I went to um I went to an Auburn I'm not Auburn I went to Under Armour um uh, All American camp going into my freshman year but I was I was only freshman college counselor there. Okay. And one of the dudes that was working, I can't remember his name, but one of the dudes that was working at the camp had asked me, uh, he's like, you know, where do you think how much you think you can average, you know, what do you where you see yourself, you know, doing this year? And I told him, oh, average about like twelve to, you know, twelve to fifteen would be cool. I feel like for a freshman, he's like, I'll try to get on the court first. Oh, damn. And I looked at him, I'm like, You don't think I'm gonna get on the court? He's right. like, bro, just try to get on the court first. I'm like, nah, you you must not know who I am. Then I started taking a little offense to it. I'm like, I try to be humble, but you're right, right. talking about getting on the court first. Like, right. So he I, he actually, his face always stuck in my mind. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this dude said, I'm not even going to be able to get on the court. All right. So that was like the part of one, my motivation. And then okay, okay. two is like, making sure I keep those numbers up. But he said, yeah. I'm not going to get on the court. <laughs> 
Um, what, did, what did you like most about playing in uh, Bruce Pearl's system? Um, it was, I always knew where I could get my buckets. That was one thing. If I was struggling, I always knew where I could get my buckets. We had a, uh, we had great continuity mm -hmm. as far as our, uh, uh, offense, you know, fast break offense, different mm -hmm. things like that. Um, definitely, we had almost fast break plays, almost like, you know, Transition. the drag screens, right. different things like that. So that's like NBA type of Certain sets right. that you go into when you, like the point guard to start calling something through transition and if he knows that I ain't get a uh, bucket in the last, you know, couple minutes or whatever, let me call this stop real quick where I can come off a down screen and, and get a catch and shoot or I can come where I can get a rip and drive and a foul, right. certain things like that. So I always knew we ran a flex offense. Okay. So I always okay. knew out of the flex where I can get my buckets at. Yeah. Uh, Coach Pro was one of the first people to really uh, sit down with me and break down film, learn how to watch yourself, learn how to yeah. critique yourself. And that's a game changer. That's so, a game changer. So I want to go into that a, a little bit. But, okay, so how were you able to adjust um, in terms of, because now it's just not, now you don't have to just go out there and move. Now you have an assignment. You know, now, now you have homework. You know, so you have to be prepared for your competition. So the person who your matchup is mm -hmm. may be a righty and he likes to pull up going to his right mm -hmm. with two dribbles, three dribbles. So that's like, yep. that's on you as you know, as exactly. your homework assignment. So how were you able to um, just kind of, you know, take on that added responsibility and then, and then apply it? From, well, first of all, I always look at, I love basketball. Yeah. So me watching somebody else play basketball, even though I may have to go play against them, I love the game that much. I'm, I'm watching basketball, so I'm, I'm just learning. I'm, I may pick up something from this person's game, right, but right, right. even then, just like a little sidebar, right before I came into my freshman year, I had a 25-minute montage of every single wing in the SEC that was returning. Okay. Okay. So I had already, and this, I, I asked my video guy for this. Shout out to Jordan Bellhurst. I asked my video guy for this. Uh, this was, we got to school in, I got to school in like late May, early June. I asked him for this like by the end of June. Okay. I had this video all throughout the summer. They had a whole montage of all the returning yeah. wins. So I had already known who everybody was coming right. into conference play. So I knew what this guy likes to do. I knew what that guy likes to do. Yeah. So it was just, it made it fun and it made it easy. I, I learned every team that we play. I learned their sets. Right. Like I, I uh, get with the scout team guys. I watch. I used to watch scout team in practice, like from the top of the uh -huh. practice facility. I would watch how they run the sets. I would learn the um, the sets that the coaches were calling out during the games. All that stuff is fun to me. Yeah, get, yeah. Like stopping somebody's offense while and calling out what somebody else is doing yeah. while they're doing it. People hate that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, talk, like when talking on the floor, they hate that. So right. I always took pride in stuff like that. Yeah. And even as like as an as a, the the opponent, you know, I. If someone's calling out my offense, I'm like, damn, like, sick. Yeah, like, like you watch us that much, right? Like, right. Yeah, like, okay, no, like, like, watch you that much. Right. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Now, after before before we get into that, what was uh, was there any game in particular, like from your freshman year, that that kind of um, that you like circled on the map, like that you want, like that you wanted to focus on playing them? Uh, definitely SEC Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky was the one that everybody everybody looks at Kentucky, and it was at Rupp Arena. So Kentucky was I played horrible that game too. You did? Like horrible. That was your first time at Kentucky? I got dunked on too. Word? Yeah, bam dunked on me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, they have, <laughs> who they have that year though? It was uh, Malik Monk, De'Aaron Fox, okay. uh, Bam. They had uh, okay, Wayne yeah, and Gabriel. Yeah. They had a whole, they got a whole, whole bunch of pros that year. Okay. Um, okay, so after after that season, you, you averaged 15 and 6. Mm -hmm. So you exceeded your expectations. Um, all freshmen, yep. uh, SEC, SEC, all freshman SEC, team. So you know, I'm thinking about that dude in my head, like, yeah, you know, yeah, said yeah. I wanted to get on the court. Remember that? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, now after this season, you know, you do, you know, really good as a as a freshman, uh, 15 and six. Um, did you have? Was there any thought that you might want to take the jump into the NBA? Or I thought about it, but I uh, I had a um, stress fracture in my shin. Okay. And the doctor was able to tell me either you can get surgery, we put a rod in your leg, and you'll be out for six months, or you can sit like three months and just let it heal. Cause it was a real deep chip in the bone in there, like real bad uh, shin splints, kind of mm -hmm. pretty much in, the, in essence. So I, I was in a boot for about two months and then rehabbing for about a month. Okay. So I, uh, I missed out on any opportunities to do any workouts or okay. like that. So I just kind of I shut it down after freshman year and wanted to get healthy going into uh, sophomore year. Okay. And we also had a um, 
we had an international trip that we were getting ready to go on. So I was like, I don't know, I want to go to the NBA. I want to go. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, right, right. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking like a freshman. I'm like, I want to go to Italy. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to Italy, but I'm also hurt at the same time. So. Right. But um, the whole summer, I pretty much rehabbed it with the thought of that we're about to go to um, Italy and I'm going to be able to play again okay. and do all that type of stuff. So, so did you... Um you trained for the most part on campus or rehab on campus? Yeah, pretty, yeah. Okay. yeah I stayed camp, on campus the whole summer. We used to have to take summer classes, so I pretty okay. much uh, okay, lifted and all, did all that stuff out there. And um, one thing I will say, our strength uh, training, uh, you know, the medical assistance that we had at Auburn, second to none. It was like, yeah, that was, that. I, I made super strides, like going to my freshman year. Also, like, still had a pretty bad diet, so I was gaining weight faster from the lifting, but like, I was, I was probably about like 225, like going like between freshman and sophomore Damn. year. I was huge. I looked, right. I looked like a football player. <laughs> like I looked crazy. Neck was all big. Right, right, right. And then once I stopped doing me and stuff, I, uh, once I changed my diet, I, uh, I started losing weight. Okay, right. Crazy right. shit. Right. Pounds. <laughs> um, now, did you did you happen to like you know maybe Coach Pearl or did you receive any feedback from like GMs or, or scouts going headed into your sophomore year that things that you may need to improve on? Uh, pretty much, um, yeah, Coach, Coach Pro definitely, uh, he would tell, he always did, we always had the, um, end of the year assessments, what we, you know, working on for the summertime, what we can bring back to the team, but he definitely would tell me what, um, what the NBA guys were saying, what mm -hmm. they wanted to see me, everybody wanted to see me work on, um, you know, being a better playmaker, everybody knows right. that, um, you know, can score, do all the different things like that, but definitely being more of a versatile playmaker. Right, right. Um, now, okay, now, now going, now going into your sophomore year, what was kind of after you know you get that feedback? What was kind of um, you know what, what was your mentality like heading into your sophomore? Was it kind of like you know I'm trying to make that leap this year, or was it just entirely focused on your team and, and hoops? Definitely, or? um, definitely two and done was the thought. Um, mm -hmm. but in the background, right before we went to uh, Italy, and this is also goes into the reason why I transferred. Right before we went to Italy, uh. My mom was going to come on the uh, the foreign tour with us, so we were going to be in Italy uh, 10, 12 days. She was going to come with us about a week before we were supposed to go out. She's uh, cooking for, like, it's, this is in July at the time, so she's probably cooking for a cookout or something like that. She's going to get a, a pop, like, in the closet or something, hits her head on the shelf. Oh, man. Starts to, get, starts to develop a concussion, but she doesn't really notice it for about maybe a week or so, mm -hmm. so then around the time she's supposed to fly down to Auburn, starts getting crazy headaches. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we tell her, hold off on flying down, we probably supposed to leave like a week after that. Um, and so still getting crazy, going head going crazy, so we had, I ended up having to go to uh, Italy and all that stuff. She stayed back, okay. but she's, uh, you know, hospital visits, doing all that stuff, and it started while we were in Italy. So that was when I was first starting to be like worried about and all that stuff. Okay, okay. And then we get back from Italy, I go home for a little bit, about, probably about a week I go home, have to come back to campus, and then probably, I want to say a month or two after that, I end up coming home again, like twice in that month. Like one weekend I come home, I come home on a Friday, leave on a Sunday, the same thing, the very next week I come on a Friday, leave on a Sunday, because I'm going back home to take care of her and all that stuff, uh -huh. and just kind of being in the unknown, I'm like, then I got to keep come back see my, see my mom's. I don't know what's going to happen. Right, right, right. Um, and obviously being, I'm all the way down to Alabama. So, um, so yeah, I was doing a lot of that stuff throughout okay. the season and different things like that. So after the season, me and Bruce sat down and we was just like, he, he already obviously he knew what the situation was mm -hmm. and he was like, you know, it's, it's in the best interest of your family mm -hmm. that you that you definitely transfer. So there was only one or two places I could have gone was like UConn or St. John's. Okay. So, now, um, so your sophomore year, you had what, what, what sixteen? I believe it was sixteen and five as a sophomore. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, now, but like, you know, obviously, you know, the general public didn't know all that you were going through. But mm -hmm. how, you know, how was that? Were you able to still kind of focus on hoops while you were, you know, because that's a lot mm -hmm. to deal with that yeah. nineteen, twenty, you know, eighteen years old. So, mm -hmm. you know, how was, you know, what was that? Um, just how how was that being able, you know, flying back and forth to Waterbury mm -hmm. and then. You know, having to produce, you know, at the college level, that's for sure. That's tough. Like, and schoolwork, <laughs> schoolwork, and then I'm gonna throw you off with one more thing. Auburn got caught up in the FBI scandal that year. Oh, right, 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 <laughs> right. And obviously, first five star recruit, everybody thinks I have something to do with it. Right. So I have moms is sick. I got schoolwork. Damn. Got to perform, and the FBI is on me, and I don't know why. Okay, right, <laughs> so right, right. I'm going through. At the same time, I'm. Trying to, you know, I'm trying to find ways to fly home and see mom. I got to go fly to New York to have meetings. 
and do and do different things like that. This is it, during season. This is after season. All you know, all different types of things like that. So it was hard, but at the same time, it was uh, it was easy because the teammates I had. Yeah, they, we made sure. we were. It was my sophomore year was almost like a movie. I want to say like we were predicted to finish last in the conference. Sure. We uh, cause we had just come off my freshman year that we had uh, we were still rebuilding. So we were getting recruits and all that stuff, and we had young guys, and we didn't have a good, uh, obviously, play against something. We had uh, came to an older SEC. Okay. Like the younger guys that was kind of taking it over, the, the guys from Kentucky, they were all going one and done and all that stuff. So we were coming in as the next best returners. Right. So every, But everybody also thought, we thought we were the next best returners, but everybody thought we was going to finish last in the conference. Mm. They predicted, uh, CBS predicted us, uh, like, the early season, uh, top 25 or whatever, they predicted us to finish 4-14 in the SEC. Oh shit! So okay. we got uh, we got shirts made and all that that said four and fourteen on it, and we would choose one person every conference game to wear the shirt in the warm up. So we go to Tennessee, okay. our okay. first game away. Who come on? You know who got the shirt on? Right, right. Four and fourteen, right in the layup lines. Yeah. ESPN, they doing the you know the stories on it like Auburn four and fourteen, smack Tennessee. Damn, get them out of here at home, yeah. first game of the conference, and then from there. It was it was really like a movie. We was rolling like right, right, right. like, like the, every game seemed like it seemed like it was going to like it was like a movie. And that did that were you, did you guys take out Kentucky that year? Yeah, you we did. Beat Kentucky at at Auburn that year. We only played them once. Uh, it rotates um how the SEC works. Like you play like we only played like Alabama, Georgia, uh, like in like maybe like two other schools uh, home and away because that's closest in our in our region. Okay, right? okay. Everybody else you. Rotate home away every other year. Okay, got you, got so, you. Um, so, yeah, we, we got rid of Kentucky that year. Okay. And then we ended up, I think they snubbed us a little bit because we beat Tennessee uh, in the first, um, which would be the tiebreaker game for the conference championship, but they uh, they gave us uh, co-conference champions with Tennessee. Okay. We should have okay. won single. Because you, because we, you beat them already. The yeah, we had the same exact record, but we won the tiebreaker. Got gotcha. you. So we should have won that, but okay. they co the coach champions. So, at, so, so again, you 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 average sixteen five as, as a sophomore. Um, you get all SEC second team. Mm -hmm. um, now, what did you? I, and I know I don't know if if this was the year, but I know this. You know, one of those years, it was an option to where you could put your name in mm -hmm. with still having the eligibility. Oh, yeah. You did okay. sign with an agent or something like that. I want to say that was the first year. Okay. My sophomore year, I want to say it was the first year they did that. So I, I ended up testing the waters without an agent. Okay. I had four workouts at uh, Denver Nuggets, mm -hmm. the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Nets, and the Jazz. Okay. But I had those four workouts, great experience right. getting to be able to just go through that whole process. Yeah. Just, you know, team flies you out, you stay in yeah. a hotel, you do all those different types yeah. of things. Per diem. Per, di per diem. <laughs> right? I'm looking like, wait a minute, we only out here for one, right? right? You know, like, like, what? What? <laughs> what? Uh, what? Same. Every yeah. city that, um, Every city that we went to, I found the best steakhouse. Okay. I take an Uber, and yeah. I don't get the best meal that I could get. If yeah. I had to spend the whole two hundred dollars, I feel like <laughs> yeah. I got to get the best meal I could get, and I got to go have the best workout that yeah. I could have. So yeah, yeah, yeah. some of the cities I spent the whole the right, whole right. on the meal. Nah, so, um, okay, so what, what would you say like was your was your best workout out of, the, of those four teams? I would say the Cleveland Cavaliers for okay. sure. Okay, definitely. Now was that because I I mean just for me I know like. You know, when I got invited to workouts, it was like, holy shit, Ed, like, you're here. Like, mm -hmm. this is your dream, bro. So, like, it would, you know, and then, like, walking into the facility, mm -hmm. I can just remember vividly just walking into the Lakers facility and just seeing Magic, Worthy, Jerry West, everybody's jersey. And I'm like, holy shit, like, yeah. like I'm here now, you I know? So, here. so, like, did you, like, did you have those moments where, I know you got, you, of yeah. course, you're able to lock in, but, like, are you still having those moments as a kid? Like, damn. Yeah. Okay. Definitely going into a going to a facility like y'all. Yeah. Like, yeah, you might have gone into an NBA facility because you was in a town or uh, a city that you had a tournament in yeah. and they let you shoot around with your college team, but yeah. I'm here and it's gonna be all GMs on the sideline right. watching me. Right. It's gonna be all coaches on the sideline right. watching me. It's six of us in here and it's mono we mono. Yeah, yeah. There's no better feeling than that. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's just, that's what you put the work in for. Right. And I like I like the just the structure of the way the NBA does the workouts because mm -hmm. Like you said, it's either the max is three on three. You know that you won't have more than you never have four on four, five mm -hmm. on five. So it's really 
get to really showcase your talents, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and if you ain't got no talent, right. it's gonna show. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. It's gonna show. Exactly. Um, so, so you get to test the waters a little bit. You didn't, you didn't hire an agent. No. Okay. So, um, and then you said that your two choices was either UConn or St. John's. Why, why, why was that? So how it worked was because I was coming home to get a hardship waiver because okay, right. my mom was sick. There was a hundred mile radius of, um, of like that you could be within so that you could uh, still be coming home to yeah. uh, check on uh, family and all that stuff. Uh, so. UConn and St. John's were only two where UConn had no more scholarships. So pretty much it was St. John's. Bro, what? <laughs> That's what they said. They have no more scholarships for, for you. Come I mean, from they could have They probably could have squeezed somebody a body. There, That's a, but. Oh, my. <laughs> Who was the coach? That was Ali? Yeah, he was getting out of there. He was, he That's was crazy, bro. That's sad, man. That's sad. Okay, so now Chris Mullen was the coach. at. Mm -hmm. at okay, so... What was, now, okay, after, after transferring, after transferring, now, did you know that you'd immediately get to play, or how long? Uh, no, I didn't know until, I knew there was a strong possibility that I would, because we had doctor's notes, we had everything that we needed to have. If the NCAA said no, then they would, probably would have been a big problem. Right, right. Because we had every single thing that we needed, like, for me to legitimately be transferring because of this reason, and okay. all of that stuff, so, um. Okay. I, I didn't find out probably I think I found out October like 13th was like the exact day I'm gonna say yeah, and that was season right there right there season is about two weeks away but the whole time I'm training practicing with the season as I mean with the team as if I'm playing right, right so right. it was never really any uh, drop off or anything I would okay. be in, in practice I was in the starters group and all that stuff as okay. if I was getting ready to go um, play and all that so once they made the announcement we were just kind of ready to get out of the way okay now um, what was it what was it? What was it like being being coached by the Hall of Fame, Chris Chris Mullen? Mullen was he was a he was a good guy. He was right. definitely like players coach or like players coach because okay. he was a player. He yeah. was like he he was somebody that he could pull you to the side and show you like this is what I would do in this situation. Right. And boom boom boom, break the situation down to you. Same thing, break it down film, break it down everything. Everything was uh from a professional standpoint. Right, right, was, right. Uh, he definitely, because he was a pro, so he had been through a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then just listening to a lot of his stories, that's a, that's a man who's been through his own, as a top 50 basketball player ever, he's been through his own trials and tribulations right. off the court, on and off the court. Right. So definitely grabbing that wisdom yeah, man, is, yeah. is priceless. Right. And Mitch Richmond was one of our assistants, like, Ooh. so run TMC. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just, uh, Tim Hardaway. Okay. You know, okay. Okay. He came. He came to campus a couple times. Okay. Definitely. So to have to have them three together and for them to be sharing their war stories and then they're still like this to this day. Okay. That's dope. That that shows that basketball is a game that creates life. That yeah. just create. It just creates relationships. Yeah. It creates everything. It mm -hmm. just and for and they create relationships with people that it bring people together for a lifetime. Yeah. And I mean, I remember my coach always telling me when I was in college. And we were actually going to Alaska Anchorage to play in the tournament there. Alaska and Chico. yeah, and he was saying like, man, this round of basketball brought me to every all, all fifty states in the United States. And I'm like, yeah. And it's just, and it and it and it didn't hit me then, but it's like, and now like I'm a pro and I'm traveling all over the world because of something I love and it's a basketball. It's, it's just mind blowing, you know. So you speaking on how it creates you know, relationships, um, and then it also creates, you know, life lessons and sure. stuff you can carry directly from the basketball court with, you know, just an example of adversity, mm -hmm. dealing, with, dealing with a coach yelling at you or yeah. messing up on the court, yeah, you know, and then you'll know how to deal with that in real life, yep. you know, and it'll be easier to deal with, you know. Because exactly. um, doing something with 19,000 people watching you, right. and, me and when you can mess up like that, yeah. and it could all go wrong, is, I feel like it's harder to fix that than fix something in your regular life. Like yeah, that can yeah. be fixed. Yeah, that's so. a good point for sure. Um, so how was the, uh, just the transition into St. John's, like coming from pretty much country mm -hmm. and then going to a big city? Yeah, def um, definitely being, um, having AU teams and stuff that I played with in New York and stuff, I was kind of, I had relationships already built in the city. I knew people. Uh, new different like uh, trainers and stuff like that. So I kind of knew my way around the city, but it was 
again, I don't like being around people, so yeah, yeah. I mean, people in New York, they they bump into your shoulder. When I, it's, a, it's a city that ne never sleeps, it's moving fast, but I feel right. like ain't no way people can be moving too fast to say excuse me. Like, right, right. There's no way. Yeah, like, come yeah, on yeah. now, that's common courtesy, but yeah. like, some of the people be out there cool out there. Like, yeah. But I mean, New York was cool though. Definitely okay. is cool. It definitely, it motivates you to, to get up and want to and want to never stop moving. Right, right, right. Want to stop moving in that city. So. Now, what was what was your role on the team like? You know, initially, like coming in, was it you know you were gonna kind of like take the lead, or was it or were people already they already there? Definitely, um, they had they definitely had a, um an established team. They had an established group of guys. Um, it's funny that uh, they had Shamari Pons, Justin Simon, guys like Marvin Clark. These these are guys that I had. I didn't know Mark before I got to St. John's, but this is somebody I'd heard of, but Shamari and Justin, I had already known them, played with or against them on uh -huh. different teams and different camps and things. So uh, when I was going on my business stuff, we kind of had already, was building that connection, like uh, we all gonna lead the shit basically. We the okay. older guys of this. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. Were, all, all four of us were definitely the older guys of the, um, of the unit, of the team. So um, we definitely kind of came in like, we don't need the shit together. So. Right. Um, now would you, now, after playing in the SEC, mm -hmm. St. John's was the Big East. Yep, the East yep. Now, what, what what would you say in terms of the level of competition? Which conference was tougher? You think SEC was like I call it the country conference. Obviously, it's, it's, it isn't a country, but it's like when you think of country, you think of like forty yard uh, the the three four uh, well, four three. I mean yeah, forty yeah, yeah. yard dash. Like everybody's fast, athletic. Okay. It's up and down. It's big, strong. It's it's all of that. It's, okay. it's just it's specimens mm -hmm. in that yeah, conference. Yeah, yeah, you got to be like a man that. to go to that conference. Yeah, okay. like, uh, okay. But the Big East is also, there's there's some specimens in that conference as well, but it's more of a head game up there. Mm -hmm. In that conference, it's, uh, mm -hmm. the game slows down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, definitely it's a lot more uh, skill, as you would say, that goes right. into it. There was I felt like there was a mixture of both in the SEC. These guys jumping out the gym. Everybody on every team is jumping out the gym. Right. You don't always have, that's not always the case in the Big East. You got guys that play below the rim. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah, well yeah. play below the rim in the Big East, but um, I think that was probably the biggest difference between those two conferences. Okay. Um, now, was there, who who were the best people at your position uh, while, you, while you were coming in in the, in the Big East? Uh, coming can, in, I can you would remember? say, Miles Powell, definitely okay, a okay. ball. Um, guys like Eli Kane from DePaul. Mm -hmm. um, Villanova at that time is uh, Eric Pascal. Okay. Booth, uh, okay. Those are two guys, the pros now, Pascal yeah. plays on the Warriors. Yeah. Um, I mean, just it's very you know it's very skilled conference as well. So it's not okay. like it's a drop off from talent. The skill mm -hmm. is just probably just athleticism. A little bit less athletic uh, guys in the um, in the Big East versus the SEC, but okay. it's nowhere near a drop off as far as talent. Right. Now, now you guys made the tournament that year. Yep. Yep. Okay. First now. four. Uh, first four out. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> first four out. So who would who'd you guys match up with? Arizona State. Okay, where was the game? At, in uh, Dayton, at Dayton University. Okay, okay, and they, they just they just took you out. Yeah, they took us out. They got us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, um, that summer, you get invited to the to the Pan Am Games. Yep, yep, yep. All right after that, see, yeah. And where where was where was uh where was that where were those games held at? Peru, Lima, okay. Peru. Wow, first time in South America. So why why did why did you? Do you know why you ultimately got selected? Or uh, it was like a Big East All Star uh, team. So basically, how the Pan Am Games uh, used to work is they would pick. It was like the college USA team. So they would pick. Um, they would either pick a conference to represent the USA team, or they would pick guys from all across every all the Power Five conferences or every conference in the country. They would uh, hold trials and pick guys okay. from that. But um, for this year, they had selected Big East conference as the um, as the conference. So they called me. USA team and I had tried out for Team USA twice in high school. Had made it to the final sixteen out of twelve uh, both times. The first time I um I made it to the actually the final thirteen. I was the last guy that they cut, and uh, I feel like the reason they cut me uh, I like, passed out at practice. I, I uh, had like a almost like a ruptured spleen from like being like, dehydrated and stuff. Was, and the mountains in Colorado, and okay, I had right, never right. been out there and stuff like that. So my body reacted like crazy. So I ended up passing all that practice, so I missed the uh, final cuts and all that okay, stuff. Okay. Then the second time, I was like in the last one of the last two to get cut, and then the third time they called me like you don't even have to try out. So I'm like, oh thank God. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I went and did that, 
So that that was that was a good experience. We got the bronze. And you guys went to Peru. Mm -hmm. And what uh what other notable guys were was on that team with you? That's uh Alpha Diallo, Miles Powell again, um David Duke, he goes to Providence, uh well, so we had two guys that played in the Big East a couple of years ago. One of them was Jeff Rosell, who mm -hmm. played at Creighton. He plays in um, plays overseas now. And then we had another guy, uh, Tyler Weidman, he played at but uh, Butler okay. a couple years ago. Okay. Um, he plays overseas as well now. Now you said, would you? How'd you guys finish up? So we finished uh, bronze. Now who who won? Uh, Argentina. But this, so the way it works is USA is the only team that sends out college guys. All the other teams, so the oh. Pan Am. Is basically supposed to be everybody on this on, on our hemisphere in the okay, world gotcha. uh, through North and South America getting ready for the Olympics and all that. Yeah. So they're sending Argentina sent like guys like Luis Scola. Oh, that's shit. Yeah, so we so oh, I'm talking Luis Scola. That's, right. like, that's a for those that don't know. That's a 13 year NBA yeah, vet. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, somebody yeah. that is well respected. Right, in the right. NBA. Um, the only person that was missing was Manu Ginobili. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah On okay. Argentina, so. Okay. Um, Definitely, we playing against you know guys that's making a mill in Europe. Yeah. And as you know, making a mill in Europe is you got you nice. Yeah, if yeah, you're making yeah. a mill in Europe, yeah. so definitely that experience uh, um, definitely it gives you a different perspective on what professional basketball mm -hmm. really is. Mm -hmm. And just and then um, getting to a lot of those guys also spoke English that we were playing against, and then we were staying in like uh, villages, okay. like uh, an Olympic village. So all the athletes, it's it's track athletes, it's um, badminton, you got. Um, all different types of just every sport that you can think of and it's different people from all different That's walks crazy. of life yeah, yeah. so you're just meeting people that are the best at where right. they come from in their sport yeah. wherever they come from right, right, so right. it's a beautiful thing no, it's dope, Super man. Beautiful. That's dope. Um, so so now now you're going into your senior year mm -hmm. what was you know now now this is your last collegiate season so kind of like you know what were what were the things you wanted you wanted to focus on in the off season, um, and then ultimately bring it to bring it to your last year? The off season, the whole summer, that I, uh, leading up to like going to Peru and stuff, uh, I had um, I was in like this. In my, well, let's go back a little further. Junior year, I had changed my diet, but I was uh, finally like into being serious about changing my diet going into my senior year, and that was the first thing I started with with learning more about my own body. How can I? Or what can I? What do I have to put in my body in order to be able to produce at the greatest level that I can produce at? Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing I started was with the diet, and then uh, right after that, obviously it's the gym and it just just staying on a strict regimen, the lift and the running, everything in the gym, and, uh, the basketball, staying on top of everything, just staying sh uh, sharp, trying to get ready for the season. Mm -hmm. um, played a couple good games out for Rude. The last game, actually, uh, the game before the bronze medal game, we had, ended up losing to Argentina by like forty five. Yeah. Yeah, they smacked us. It was horrible. They're like that's they really showed what pros look like yeah, versus yeah. what college players look right, like. Right, right. But um, right in that game, like probably with like six minutes left in the game, the whole time I'm I'm going up to Peru. Everybody tell me don't get hurt, don't get hurt when you go mm. out there, don't get hurt. Mm. I think they put bad energy in the air. But um, that's probably like six minutes left in the game. We're getting smacked and all that stuff. But you never stop going hard. Right, right. You don't ever know who's watching you. But I ended up uh, coming down on somebody's foot. I twist my ankle and. Uh, I can't, obviously I can't finish the games and stuff like that. I didn't play in the bronze medal game. I'm in a boot while I'm out in Peru. Yeah. The, the medical, um, the medical help that was out there, they we got MRIs and all that stuff, but obviously I wanted to come back home to the States yeah. and get and have, have it reevaluated and all that stuff. So um, that kind of changed my thoughts going into senior year because I felt like I was hurt going into it, but like uh, I go get the first MRI and they just tell me, you know, ankle sprain. So I'm thinking, mm. all right, I'll take a couple weeks off. I'm still in this boot or whatever. I also don't like being in boots, but I'm like, you know what, for the time being, I'll be in this boot. I'm in the boot for maybe three weeks. And then I start, you know, we start our preseason training and stuff. But I'm also, the whole time, I'm like, my foot don't feel right. I still feel like this pain. It's just, uh, it's tight. It's, you know, certain things. But my first thing is like, all right, I got to do extra to try to, uh, you know, work through this. So I got to do like extra stretch, and I got to see the, the strength coach extra do certain things, the extra rehab basically, mm -hmm. and that'll help all this pain go away. We do another another month, two months goes by, same pain. Now Damn. the season is getting ready. We're getting ready to go into exhibition start slash first game of the season now. Mm -hmm. Pain is still there, so I'm going in there. I'm not as explosive as I should be. You know, different things like that. And in the meantime, in between that, I'm getting. Like uh, another MRI from the school, and I'm like, 
this has been three months now. Right. It's not an ankle sprain. Yeah. No, nah, ankle sprain, ankle sprain. So then we, you know, going through the season and stuff, we get to December playing against Brown University. I twist my ankle one more time. Like, oh, uh, so when we were in Peru, I turned my ankle on the outside. Yeah. So it was bad on the outside. Playing against Brown, turned it the other way on the inside. Mm. So now I had the torn ligament on the outside. And then on the inside, I had like a, it was like three quarters of the way torn. So it was mm. damn near coming off. Um, and I didn't know none of this. Uh, even after I got an MRI, after that time, I twisted against Brown. St. John's doctors tell me it's a sprained ankle oh, again. Man. And I'm like, yo, there's no way y'all are telling. First of all, my ankle looks like this. Right. There's no way y'all are telling me this is a sprained ankle. So I end up uh, a little while. I take like a month. Take like a month. I'm in a boot for like a month and stuff. The swelling goes down and stuff. I try to come back and play again. Uh, this is probably, I want to say this is end of January, going into February. But while I'm playing, like one day after practice, I just, I, I Googled like a uh, best foot uh, doctors in New York. So and I just started calling people. I called this dude. Uh, so fuck it, <laughs> I, I gotta figure, like, sure I gotta figure something out. <laughs> right, right. Somebody's not, somebody's lying. Yeah, yeah, I gotta yeah. figure something out. So I called this dude, I asked him if I could come in, he could check out my foot. He ended up being an uh, old Knicks doctor. So, so we chopped it up for a while, but he, I give, I bring him all my MRIs from, uh, I had three MRI August, sometime in like October, and then from my December MRI. Bring him all of them. He looks at the one from August and says, Whoever didn't tell you to stop playing and get mm. surgery in August, they effed you. Mm. Like straight like he told me that straight like that in the office. Damn. And he's like, I don't know what you want to do from here. So at first my heart, I'm like, wait, right. August, like, damn, they've been telling me this whole time. Right, he's right. like, Yeah. They shouldn't have told you that it was just an ankle sprain. So, um so then I'm like, all right, all right, maybe this dude is just a little maybe he's all right. I'm taking everything he's saying, but I'm like, maybe he's a little off. Let me go find somebody else. Yeah, so I waited yeah. a couple of days, get on Google again. <laughs> Best foot doctors, and this the next guy that I googled, he actually ended up being the one that did my surgery for me. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Who let you play? Who let you play since August? I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, you should probably, you know, stop the season, all that stuff. So we had, um, so had, and the whole time you're getting playing. these, you're playing. I'm playing while well, the whole time I'm getting oh checked out. God. I'm playing. I'm I'm doing extra rehab and all this stuff. This dude actually told me. He's like, what do you do for like, you know, the stretch and all the different things? And he was chuckling while he was saying, I'm like, what are you chuckling for? Right. He's like, you know, there's nothing that you can do besides surgery. Like, he's like, there's literally nothing that right. anybody can do for you besides surgery. He's like, your foot. When I when I used to like put my foot, I used to just like hang off, like, damn. <laughs> just like hang off. Just like, because the ligaments, it was just, just done. Like, yeah, it would hang off, like, um, no explosion, none of that type of stuff. So he told me, he was like, um, I, we had I had went to see him on like a Wednesday or Thursday, and on like uh, Friday we were playing either like Friday or Saturday. One of them days we were playing at um, Creighton, mm -hmm. at, uh, we had the away game at Creighton, so we were getting ready to fly out. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take this uh, this next game. Like you know, I'm gonna think about it because this is at the end of the day, this is senior year. I don't have enough. I've already played right. 75 percent of the season, hurt at that at that, but like I don't have another one of these, so I may have to just say suck it up the way I've been doing it or right, right. you know we'll see what happens so then I take we go to the Creighton game flying it was not flying it was definitely any away games that we went to we flew uh, I yeah, it so, so yeah. I, I used to have to get in the pool at the hotel work through it the whole night uh, different massages and stuff shout out to my Damn. my strength coach Duval we spent hours together working yeah. on and it was obviously we we gained a closer bond as coach and player, but it was a lot of wasted time. Yeah, <laughs> we were doing yeah. good stuff, but a lot of wasted time because right. there was nothing that could have been done besides right. surgery. So um, we get to Creighton, and then uh, we play in the game, and I'm, I'm, I'm not explosive. I'm, the only thing I'm able to do is catch and shoot. I'm not. I'm barely able to slide on defense. I'm not able to penetrate. And damn, my game is. is yeah. Predicated off of being an attacker. Yeah. So like that right I can't go by nobody. I can't do nothing. I can't create space The only thing I can literally do is stand there and hope it goes in when I take off after shooting it um, So then after the game, I'm just like I call my parents I'm like oh, I'm, done. I'm not playing no more. Like, I can't there's no way I'll be able to do this So then I get back. I called that um called the doctor up again And I'm like yo, I'm like, like can we start surgery and all that? So he uh, I ended up having the and at the same time COVID and everything Mm. That that COVID uh, tumbleweed is starting to get mm -hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger. 
So I gotta get my surgery now. I don't have a lot of time because if it's not an essential like a gunshot wound or you need that surgery for an ankle sports surgery, they're not they're not caring about that. They need it's essential workers and all that stuff. So um, I had to get on get surgery and stuff underway real fast. And then I had uh I got surgery like um I wanna say like early March, March eighth. Okay. So I got right on it as soon as I could and then COVID, the last game of the season had we were the last game in college basketball. That um, we play, it was oh, against sure. Creighton in the Big East tournament, and okay. they stopped us at halftime. Oh, I was yeah. in my boot for that after surgery. I was in the hard cast and all that. But, okay. Yeah, senior night hard cast. Yeah. So, so what was? Man, that had to be frustrating, bro. Like, yeah. what? What was? Like, how were you just able to just like cope with just like all the stuff going on in your mind and like not only the expectation of trying to get to the league, but mm -hmm. just like. Now you're, you know, this is your last year and you're dealing with this issue that's mm -hmm. kind of like out of your control. Um, so how do you, you know, what are you, are you leaning, are you leaning on somebody? Like, mm -hmm. how are you able to, is it just support system? Like, how are you able to just like deal with it for you? You know, like, what, well, like, what, what things were you able to like gravitate towards to help you just like find some, some like get grounded? You know what uh, I mean? Like, because I know I had, a, okay. My girlfriend won for sure. Okay. She's like, that boom. Like okay. she was definitely the like the one cried to all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fellas, just don't be afraid to love your woman. <laughs> right. Tell me right now. That's no, right. But, um, definitely, I mean, but besides that, mother, father, just you know, just yeah. the people that you know in my life that I'm able to talk to, like you know, damn, I'm going through this, but you know, they obviously they have my back, and right. they you know they told me you know get this surgery, and then we're gonna work through, and I'll start at square one. You've never been somebody who's been afraid to work. That's true. So the yeah. process that you're gonna have to take coming back through the, after the surgery, yeah. you probably will have fun with it. And I actually did have fun with the process. I mean, you you do you was with me a lot yeah. through this summer. We yeah. worked out all together this summer. So definitely, this process is something I wouldn't change. I wouldn't take Words. this. For, I didn't. I don't take basketball for granted anymore. Like, yeah. not that I yeah. did take it for granted because yeah. I always loved the work and stuff. But you yeah. always kind of forget that it can be taken like yeah. that. Yeah. And then when so when it's almost taken like that, it's like all right. Let me refocus a little bit. Let me stop thinking that it can't be taken. No, so. for sure. And and I and I can notice it, um, you know, not only in you as a person, but just like your your preparation into working out now. It's it's different. Like, would you say it's different? Yeah, I think you know. So. And and I just noticed that from afar. Just like you know, a few times we worked out together, you would take your little 10, 15 minutes mm -hmm. to just properly get your body. Yeah. Right. And, and you, somebody, I always watch stretch. Yeah. Before and after. Sometimes right. I don't stretch after, but you always yeah. take the time before, after. Yeah. It, so you definitely somebody that kind of one of the first people I looked at, like, oh, all right, body right. serious. Nah, yeah, yeah, no. Nah, I mean, it helps. Um, I I was the same way. Probably I didn't start stretching like stretching, stretching until my third year as a pro. I had one of the. I was in Poland. I had this veteran, and every day, same thing. He would have the stretching routine. I'm like, and he would do it after every shoot around, morning mm -hmm. practice. Even in practice, and I'm like, bro, you do this every time. He's like, yeah, just join me one day, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you to help. I joined him one day, and I kept with it that whole season. Literally, the same stretching regimen that I do today. Comes to um, you like almost like superstition. Yeah, I, I have to do it. I have to. Mm -hmm. I have to. Um, so, but I know you. I know you had a few good games your senior year. Mm -hmm. You, I know you. Yeah, went, no, you definitely. Went. Uh, there was a couple of days I was feeling better than others, but definitely. Okay. Um, Cause you, you had a good game against Central. Uh, Central, yep, that was um, but that was that was before the last time I twisted my ankle. That was when it okay. completely like took me out. So I had a little explosion going into the um, the preseason. Those uh, those first like ten games, mm -hmm. I had a little bit of pop, and then after that Brown game, which was probably like game like eleven, okay, yeah, it was over. After Damn, that. yeah, wow. Okay, um, okay, so now post college, you know, it's kind of. It's kind of like everything's on you almost, mm -hmm. and you know, like being kind of being in your shoes before. I kind of I embrace that, you mm -hmm. know, because it's like, you know, throughout you know your last four years, it's like you know, or in general, growing up as your career, it's like you're with the team, you know, you're with Sacred Heart, and then you're with Auburn, mm -hmm. and you're with St. John. So it's like you have to figure out not only for you to get better, but as a group to look better. Mm -hmm. um, but now as a pro, it's like all you have to focus on is you, you know. So. Um, so what was what was the process like for you, like deciding on getting an agent, um, or you know how how was that for you? Oh, uh, definitely it was uh, obviously all new. Um, definitely just wanted to go with somebody that I felt had uh, you know my best interests at mind, and definitely 
you know, this, this might sound weird to some people, but knowing that somebody can make money off of you, mm -hmm. because that means that if they know that they can make money off you, push you, mm -hmm. then they're gonna help you get to those homes. Yeah. And it's just having, about having somebody that one cares about you, one or two, somebody that's gonna push you. Right. So um, I think that's what uh, went into it. Um, I chose a, a close family friend okay. uh, as an agent. So um, definitely, that was, cool. Cool. That was the, the deciding factor. Was it, because for me it was, it's, I mean, it's just tough, like, you know, just that, at least for me, it was, you know, I, it was, I did the interview process, mm -hmm. um, and, and they're, you know, agents are lawyers, you exactly. know, so obviously they, they know how to talk well, so, like, for me, it was like, okay, this lawyer is taking me out to eat, taking my family out to eat, and it's like, yeah, bro, everything you're saying sounds amazing, yeah. you know, so, but it's still kind of hard to, like, choose, okay, this guy's for me, so it's, it was, it's good to hear that you found the person that was right for you in the first the first try or oh yeah for your first try okay um it took a couple months process but definitely yeah. first try yeah. okay now what has been the best thing about being a pro just just this far uh the fact that everything in your own hands yeah <coughs> excuse me like um the fact that this is a job yeah like do you think when you know, most people think a job they think i gotta get up like a clock in i go do yeah. certain things basketball yeah. My job. Like, yeah. I wouldn't want any other way. Yeah. Like I get to go into the office is literally going to the gym. Right. Like I get to go, you know, sometimes and not everything is like uh all the time like you just pounding your body in the gym, yeah. but sometimes just going to shoot free throws, I'm just clocked in. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. just it's just knowing that in the back of your head is right. like it makes it more fun. And I think also it's different because it's a twenty four hour job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even the thoughts that you're thinking. Yeah. You, know, you have to you have to manage that, you know, you have to manage what you're eating. You know, just what you're what you're watching, what you're reading. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, you know, ultimately everything you do, everything you put in your body is going to show on the court. You know? goes, a lot more goes into it than what people just see on the court. Yeah. I think, or well, not know a lot right. more goes into it. Right. Um, okay, so now that you don't have just like, you know, the uh, just the overwhelming, not overwhelming, but just the the, the demand mm -hmm. that like school brings to your schedule. What kind of um, what stuff outside of basketball or you know other passions have you have you tapped into? Uh, to, as of recently, trying to get more into politics. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, before that, definitely, I mean, the average person, video games, okay. you know, watch TV, okay. music videos, stuff like that. But definitely politics. Uh, as, as of recently, more spirituality. Yeah. Um, a lot of different things, different uh, outside the box thinking has right. been like my. Or like premise, I guess. Yeah. That's, the reason. that's that's dope because I kind of, um, you know, I, w I would say like, you know, everybody's on their journey, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, it kind of hit me around the same time it's hitting you what you're going through when I became a pro. Yeah. So when I went to my first year out in France, that's when you know I had a lot of downtime. Obviously, I'm alone for the most of the time. I got a computer. I got information in my hands. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when I just started to dive in on, you know, diet, um, just being exposed to um, what's what's the indigenous diet, what's the natural diet, um, and just being exposed to information of, you know, how we how we've gotten here as a society, and you know, a lot of things that's got us here isn't necessarily healthy for us, or you know, or beneficial to us. Um, so I, you know, what you're doing, I, I I love what you're doing. Just the space you're in, it's it's just super inspiring because. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want you to, you know, ever, you know, because you're walking your path and like, you know, you may have a friend or, or a mentor that may be like, damn, stop is Why is he talking about this? Why is he doing this? But like, you know, you're doing, doing it for a reason, you know, like you're searching for that knowledge in yourself for a reason. Um, and it's, and it's inspiring because it's work and mm -hmm. it's a, it's, it's a lot of work to want to better yourself and learn. Um, and it's not easy to, you know, like we said off the off the camera, it's not easy to pick up a book and read, you know, like that's that's something that's not even it's just obsolete now. So, um, you know, I love that you know you're just on you're just thirsty for knowledge, and you know I just you know I just want you to know that I, I do see that and I commend that. Um, and I think it's I think it's it's really it's even more cooler that that it's you because um, you know you are who you are, and people. Can, you know, won't look down on you for thinking how you think. You know, like you already have this platform, so um, you know you're you're just becoming more of you. And, and I think, and I think we need more of that. You know, the the 
we don't want to see like the typical basketball athlete is that's in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. It's, it's done, right? It's done. So, um, you know, and and you you're a, a, a person who knows he has a platform and utilizes that platform. So I think um, you know you stepping outside the box and doing something that's not the norm or not normal for basketball players is is definitely inspirational. Um, but what is so so what is your what is your daily training you know regimen like as as of now? As of now. Gym, yeah, gym and gym. I call it right. pretty much. I mean, as you know, uh, got basketball in the morning, uh, or uh, new around noon time we, we work, normally work out, and then you got your weights after, and then basketball again. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, that's pretty much a day right there. Yeah, and then yeah. you make sure you're fueling yourself accordingly in between. Um, and through COVID, it's been a little harder to get like pick up, as you know, things like that. But kind of just keeping on that same regimen throughout these last six months. Right, it's just been working out. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, okay, now let's let's talk a little bit about um, just the draft, mm-hmm. um, the NBA draft, which just passed. When was it? This was November 18th. Okay, the 18th. So this was kind of, would you say it was kind of like circled on your calendar or? Uh, kind of. Yeah? Kinda, okay, yeah. okay. Definitely, definitely something, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so what was it, you know, like, because I have, you know, obviously I have my own experience and I'll share that after, but mm-hmm. like. You know what were what were your you know just what was going in, in you know in your mind like was the emotions high like you know like who uh, were you with like were, you know what I'm for saying? sure uh, definitely I would have to bring the there was I don't think there was more, much of an emotional connection to it because knowing that I got hurt and mm-hmm. and I was rehabbing this whole time through a you know whatever virtual combine you know all these things that were happening I was trying to get healthy the whole time so. Mm-hmm. The where I've landed at as far as you know being an undrafted free agent and stuff, I kind of predict that not predicted bad on myself necessarily, mm-hmm. but predicted that right. to happen and knowing that I'm gonna have to kind of maneuver my way around right. getting to the NBA. Right. There may have to be a back door. I may have to go overseas for a little while right. and then come back, right. uh, earn something in summer league, things like that. Right. So that's something one I'm fine with because I love basketball first. So wherever somebody would place me to play basketball, I'm gonna make the best out of that out of that situation. But knowing I'm still working mm-hmm. to get to something, so um, definitely it's process. Okay, it's just like any other process. Right. So. Um, now, now who who were, who were you who were you with watching watching the draft? Oh, uh, the family. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, for yeah, for, I mean for me it was it was you know definitely. You know, you. I mean, I, you know, I would. I don't even know what type of shot I had, but um, you know, I did do workouts. I thought I had a shot. You know, and like you know, second round came. Um, you know, I'm just dolo watching at the crib in L.A. actually, and you know, like San Antonio had like the last, you know, like maybe like two of the last ten picks. You know, I'm thinking like San Antonio organization. They may take a chance on me, like like a Patty Mills, who Patty Mills came out of my conference. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Greg Popovich being that coach that selects just the different type of players. Um, you know, obviously it didn't didn't come into fruition, but it was still, um, you know, like you said, I wouldn't say it was emotional, but it was still just like a big part of my life that, you know, that didn't come true. But but ultimately, you know, I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, um, just because, you know, that the path that I have taken, it's been, it's been a blessing. But now that you, now that you mentioned you know, you rehabbing during this time. It's kind of almost like COVID played a positive role in yeah, in sure. your rehab, for right? Sure, definitely, because it uh, it slowed down a lot of everything that was going on. Right. Uh, just definitely not being in school. Right. Uh, besides online classes, um, and then having the whole summer. Uh, this is the first summer in four years I haven't had to worry about an online class. Damn. So word. I haven't thought about the idea of school. Personally, I'm not a fan of school. Right. I love I love learning and I love knowledge, but I'm not a fan of the schooling system, yeah, the system at all. Right, right, right. <laughs> at all. And then, but you, you did graduate. And yes, you graduated. Uh, I, I always pat myself up on the back a little bit. Got a, a all Big East academic. Graduated, okay. So okay. Graduated. Now we team all academic or something like that. So. Is that a communication major still? Yeah. Man, that's dope, man. That's dope. That's dope. And a lot of you know that. I think you'll you'll realize. That that holds a lot of weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, sure. even though it's still like that school system, but it's mm-hmm. still St. John's, you know, private school. Mm-hmm. You know, that just on your resume says a lot. You know, and and me being out of school for eight years now, um, having that Jesuit background, you know, that 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 uh, private school background, 
um, it has you you have that network, yeah, you know what I mean, sure. um, and that you're always able to tap into. For sure. Um, but okay, just you know, wind down. Just general questions. Um, is there is there any advice that you would give, like, you know, maybe a college player or, or a high school athlete or a middle school athlete that would that looks up to you or would like to follow in your footsteps? What type of advice would you give them? Stay off social media. Mm. <laughs> That's number one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Instant gratification, I feel like, is is what has killed our world. Yeah. It, like one step at a time. You see. You see somebody that's been working on something for 15 years and they haven't had that break yet. Yeah. But then you see somebody right. who just picked up something or they could be a rapper or whatever they may be doing in that field. And they were doing it for two months or two minutes sometimes. They, all it takes sometimes is a 10 second video yeah. to get somebody fame. Yeah. So now with that instant gratification, this person that's been working on something for 15 years that's mm. clearly, no matter how you want to slice the pie, mm. is more deserving of this opportunity mm. than this person. Yeah. But because of that instant gratification that maybe sometimes this person doesn't have access to or right. just something, there's a million different factors right. that I feel like that slowly has and is continuing to destroy our world. No, yeah. No, that's, that's a good point, man, because, you know, even though as much as, you know, as much as I would like to think now, like, because I think of social media or just Instagram in general as, like, your current, you know, your 2020 resume. Like, that's your modern-day resume. Mm -hmm. But still, it's only a shell of who you actually are. So it's kind of, it's very misleading. And, yeah. um, you know, and then, you know, just, you know, all the toxic stuff going to it, just clout chasing and, and so, you know, just like, you know, the example you gave, some person who maybe not be as deserving as the person who put in the work. Um, so I, th I think that's a great, that's a great point, man. Um, you know, and I, and I think it's, it's only going to get worse. Um, I don't know if you saw, but this, have you seen the documentary Social Dilemma? It's on Netflix. Really, really Social, good. No, I don't think I've seen it. And so it's, in a nutshell, it's basically like, you know... It's not even. It's not even. The money isn't what they're after anymore. Mm. What YouTube, what Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, what all they're after is attention. So they're trying to keep your attention on that app. Mm -hmm. You know. So if you, if you, if you, even if you look at it now, they had a study, and now all services do it. But like even when you're watching Netflix, you know how to go to the next episode. It'll say it's going to start eight, seven, six. Mm -hmm. So they figured out. They did a study, and they figured out if you, you put that thing. The person, the viewer is more likely to watch the, the next episode, you know, so, um, and then you look at something that, like a platform like TikTok, where it's like, you know, you go on Twitter or Instagram, and you kind of like got to scroll, mm -hmm. find a video, and you can kind of select what you want to see, but for TikTok, it's like, you open up the app, and it's already it's right in front of going, you. so it's kind of, you get lost in the, you know you what I mean? scroll for hours. Right. You never run out of stuff to look at, that's right. why I don't have a TikTok. Right, right. I watch people on TikTok all day, and I'm like, yeah, you, that's not going to be yeah, and then, but the way they broke it down was like, there's people on the other side of your phone mm -hmm. that's controlling you and giving you what you want based on your search engine, based yep. on what you like, cookies, you know. Okay. So, so that and you know, in terms of being, you know, getting into politics, um, you know, even how they said Trump got in office of, of uh, the Russia, you know, doing doing Facebook ads, running Facebook ads, mm -hmm. but that. You know that's that's an example, but that's that stuff is real in terms of how social media can shape your just the information you're thinking, you know, your thing, and how you think. You know, so that's like that's the most important thing is like where are you getting your information mm -hmm. from? You know, and is it like you know is it is it genuine? Is it organic? Exactly. Is it real? Um, so I could definitely you know take a look at that interview, but you know social you know the social media aspect is definitely you know hurting. Um, obviously, there's positives, but um, there's a lot of negatives to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's funny that you uh, that you brought up the whole uh, Russia hoax and everything that was happening, because if you look at and that ties back into social media, mainstream media. If you look at mainstream media and how our mainstream media reports what was happening at that time, it was uh, how the Donald Trump had something to do with Russia and all this right, stuff. Right, right, right. If you ever go on a Russian uh, news blog or anything, you would see it says something along more along the lines of Hillary Clinton mm. Russia hoax. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because their people are telling them over there that this yeah. is exactly what's happening. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We're not gonna sugarcoat it for you guys. We're not gonna give you that that instant story that you can make something right. about right. let's right. just tell the citizens the right. truth. Right. And I think ultimately that's where 
America gets its money, you know, is that kind of mm-hmm. that fear-based mentality, that greedy mentality mm-hmm. that like, and you'll, 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 you know, you've traveled, you're well traveled, but like, you'll notice it more once you're, once you travel, you get older that, you know, just how America is perceived and how America, you know, we think we're here and we, you know, but it's like in reality, it's like, nah, people are laughing at us. Yeah, oh yeah, and, and, and almost in every other country, yeah. every other country I've been to, when they think about America, they think arrogant, spoiled, yeah. don't have to work for much, yeah. and yeah. to an extent, when you talk about social media, instant gratification, that's true. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are just, it's, it's a lot of get-rich-quick schemes out here. For sure. It's not a lot of process. Out here. For sure. Um, okay, so last question. What are what are two or three um, of your favorite books that you may have read over the course of your life um, that, that you would recommend to the viewers? Mm-hmm. Monster by Walter Dean Myers. Mm. Um, I read it in middle school. It's about a, it's pretty much about a boy who's, I think he's like with his friends. Uh, one of them robs a gas station, but he ends up being on trial for it, obviously accomplice to the whole thing. So, but the book is in the setting of the trial. So everything is from the courtroom. So you see judge, the different characters, the, different, the jury, you see all that different oh, wow. stuff. So that's basically the basis of the book. So that was a pretty good book. Reading that when, you know, young, just yeah, knowing, all right, you put yourself in this character's shoes. The only thing that's missing is he's probably ten years older than me. I'm yeah. probably ten at the time reading. It. He's about twenty. He's mm-hmm. a black man mm-hmm. inner city. Mm-hmm. It could be that could very well be me in eight years. Definitely. So just reading something like that and understanding that that could shape how you know how I eventually maneuvered the crowds that I hung out with. Right. Just this different stereotypical things that as a black man in society you don't want to make yourself a part of because. You end up either end up dead or in jail from doing yeah. it, and yeah. even if you're not partaking in it yourself, if you're around it, mm-hmm. you could still end up dead or in jail from yeah. being around it. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, that no. So who who put that book in your hand? Or like that was we read that in school. Oh wow! And then I actually ended up reading it like two more times outside of school just okay. to kind of pick it apart. Okay. And then from there, Lord of the Flies was another one. I forgot who wrote uh, Lord of the Flies. Okay. And then um, also. I'm not like really too much of a big reader. Okay. But definitely the autobi- I would say the autobiography of Malcolm X. Oh, yeah, it sounds a classic. Like, it sounds like a cliche, but Malcolm no, X was one of he was he not was that. that. Yeah, <laughs> he was sure. that. That's a classic. That's like definitely my favorite movie all time. Mm-hmm. Um but And even the movie I feel sometimes it's a little yeah. it's a little iffy. Spike was a little iffy on that movie. For it sure. Wasn't too true. Definitely. Um but I, I yeah, I, I read that book. I actually finished that book this past season and it was it was amazing man yeah. I love you know that's that's my my hero for sure um, I, I personally I believe that from a black leadership standpoint I feel like in the last maybe 100 years Malcolm X might have been our only right yeah. black leader for sure a lot of people don't want to talk about it but he probably would be I don't want to give the Martin Luther King, but yeah. <laughs> Malcolm X was our only right yeah. black leader for nah, the last I years I hear <laughs> that 100% um, but yeah, bro, that's a wrap, man. I appreciate you coming on, bro. Um, you know, I, I definitely enjoy, enjoyed having you, bro. I love, you know, connecting with you. Um, so yeah, best of luck in Thank everything you, you do. And, you know, if you ever need some, just some advice or just want to bounce ideas off of me, obviously I'm here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, bro, I appreciate it, man. That's no problem. Thank you.